9 o'clock. Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you an exciting dramatization of an unforgettable story on the Hallmark... Tonight's story was chosen from the world of fiction by one of the world's best-known authors. Hallmark is proud to present the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight on the Hallmark Playhouse, we present the first dramatization of a novel by George Agnew Chamberlain called The Phantom Philly. This is the sort of story that just couldn't be written by a man who hadn't lived and also loved the kind of life he wrote about. So I asked Mr. Chamberlain about this, and sure enough, he had. And not only that, but he remembered it with warmth and humor. I like this story because it gives us a breath of the open air and somehow the freshness and charm of the American soil. And also to be quite candid because it's about horses. The love of a man for a horse is one of the oldest and best loves on earth. And I wasn't surprised when Mr. Chamberlain confessed that of all the stories he'd written, this was one of those he'd enjoyed most writing. As we talked, he told me another thing, that of all the tributes he received, the one he valued most came from an old man here in California who said there wasn't a single mistake about horses in it. And this old man surely should have known because he belonged to a trade rapidly going out these days. He was a blacksmith. I suppose Mr. Chamberlain must have raised some trotters himself, Mr. Hilton. Yes, he raced them, trained them, and bred them. So what could be more natural than for him to write a thoroughbred story like this, The Phantom Philly? But before we begin, here is Frank Goss with a message from the people who bring you the Hallmark Playhouse. There are Hallmark cards for every memorable occasion on your calendar. For birthdays, anniversaries, holidays. Yes, for every occasion that calls for remembrance. For a friendly greeting, a word of good cheer, an expression of sympathy. There is a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And that identifying name on the back, Hallmark. Well, that says you cared enough to send the very best. And now, the Phantom Philly on the Hallmark Playhouse. <laughs> The boy's name was Sparky Thornton, and he was old for a boy, but young for a man, and very new to Roundhouse Farm. He tried not to show it on that first morning of his arrival at his uncle Thunderbolt's decrepit horse farm, but he'd been bitterly disappointed. There was one horse in the decaying stable, the lady, and the lady was blind. Whereas across the road behind a half-mile long fence was Low Meadows Farm, gifted with magnificent and numerous horses. Forgive Sparky Thornton for prying loose that board in the fence. Forgive him his boyish trespass, and don't say it serves him right, as that black, neighing monster in the paddock behind the fence utters a terrifying cry and charges wildly at the young intruder. Holy cow! Easy there, boy! Easy! Easy! They tried to get in there! Get out! Yeah? How? She's a killer! Easy, boy! So, boy! So, boy, so, chief. Why, he's showing off to you. Uh, look out. I'm going to try to vault the paddock rail. Oh, he's never behaved like that before. Here I come. Oh, there. I skinned my knee, though. You're lucky to get out alive. Oh, I, I have a way with horses. The chief has a way with people. He kills them. Nice horsey. Hey, what's that skimpy rig you're driving? Why, it's a racing sock, of course. Where are you from? Roundhouse Farm, across the road. You know you're in enemy territory, don't you? Why, no. The bolts and the bulls don't get along. Are you a bull? Oh, no. I'm Shah Bruce. My father's Jed Bruce, and he's manager and chief trainer for Godar Bulls. I'm Sparky Thornton. You're trespassing. I guess so. Well, what's the idea? I like horses. That's good enough for me. So, uh, 
That dinky rig is a sulky, huh? And a lot tougher to drive than you think. It's a girl's tricycle with a horse where the front wheel belongs. You like to try it? Get out. Get in. What do you call this horse? Trumpet. All right. Let her go. Get up. Oh, no, no, no. Look out for that drug. It's a mallet head. I'm doing all right. You're not. Come back here. Hold the reins further back. And keep your hands on your knees. Keep it. Oh, just come back, that's all. Get down out of that sulky. Why, what's the matter? I was doing all right. That was the rottenest piece of driving I've ever seen in all my days. How many days is that? Why, why, 17 years. Why? I'll see you again when you're 17 and a half. Thanks for the buggy ride. Well, of all the ridiculous... Goodbye, Miss Bruce. <laughs> Sparky, the girl was right to begin with. You'd no call to trespass on Goodall Boo's property. Uncle Thunder, I want you to teach me to drive a racing socky. You were wrong being on Boo's property. But no nephew of mine is going to be outrid by anyone with Boo's stables. Sure, Bruce isn't a Boo. She's the trainer's daughter. I said anyone, Sparky. We'll be out on the old cornfield track every morning, rain or shine, till you can drive a racing socky. And good. That's all, Sparky. Dismissed. <laughs> You're getting it, son. Now it's coming. Use your hands to tell the lady your wishes. It's the hands communicating through the reins that does it. Hands. That's it. Now it's coming. Aunt Hattie, you... where's Uncle Thunder this morning? The attic. The attic? Oh, I've been waiting out in the cornfield for my driving lessons. I'll go get him. No, Sparky. Don't go. Mm. Is he sick? You could call it that. But it's in the heart. Heart trouble? Maybe I should say the soul. Oh, once a year comes spring. Your uncle hears the trotters trotting. When that happens, seems he can't no ways hold back from drowning out the sound with liquor. And this spring, it's ten times worse. Well, why is it worse? Account of you. What did I do that was wrong? You came along 15 years too late, Sparky. I'm going up to him. No. No, Sparky, no. I'm going up, I say. Go away. Thunder. Stay out. Thunder. Are you all right? Passable. For a failure. You're not a failure. Not with me, you're not. Take a look at Roundhouse Farm. You'll see ruins, dust, mold. What happened, Thunder? Godar Bull and me owned this farm together. We had a fight over firing or not firing the lady's groom. Little thing like that, but I'm a firm man for seeing justice done. All right, I go away to a harness meet. Come back and find out the partnership is busted up. He takes the horses, I got the land. Can you fix that all right? only horse he let me keep was a lady. Blind. Poor lady. Well, blind or not, she's a Morgan mayor. That's good? That's great. Greatest bloodline in the business. But the thunder, uh, What kind of a horse would you say Hamilcar Chief is? Great bloodlines, too, but he's gone mean. Why? Ask and learn. Coming downstairs, Thunder? I'll be down for dinner. Tell Ma. I'll tell her. Well, go on. Why, I, I just wanted to say I, I'm i sorry I came 15 years too late. You'd have been a great driver with those whispering hands of yours if I had the horses. Well, come downstairs real soon, won't you, Thunder? <laughs> Evening, Thunder. Time I came downstairs. Did you do the right thing first? What's that? Did you pray? Yes, I did. What'd you pray for, Thunder? I 
Pray for strength. What else did you pray for? Forgiveness, I prayed for. What else? I prayed for heaven to send me a horse to beat the living tar to good off bell. Thunderbolt. How many times have I told you not to say living tar? Sorry. Can I have to eat now? That night, a youth crossed the meadows under the silent stars. Behind him walked a horse who must have been a long time blind to walk so surely in darkness. They crossed the road to an eight-foot fence. The fence yielded easily where it had yielded once before to Sparky Thornton. But the breach was wider this time, much wider. In Hamilcar Chief's stall, the great stallion awoke. The boy closed down the boards of the breach fence and waited alone. Inside came a terrible and triumphant sound. Sparky. Sparky Thornton. What's the matter, Thunder? This is going to be a rough Thanksgiving week for you. What's the matter? See this razor strap? So what? You're going to get it, boy. What for? You're going to tell? Tell what? You know what. Oh, what's wrong with you? Breed the lady to some cat meat stallion, will you? Oh, shut that out. Who was he? Who's the father? Hamilcar Chief. Mating the lady with some glue part of a... Hamilcar Chief. Yeah, I, I've got a certificate to show for it. You're lying. I'm not. You forced it. I didn't. I made friends with Hamilcar Chief's groom. He doesn't know I'm your nephew. He gave Godard Bull a certificate to sign and he signed it. Where'd you get the $100 fee? The groom paid it. And I'm paying him back on installments. 20% interest. Worth it. Worth it. Yeah, that's what I thought. Hamilcar Chief. Yes, sir. You've got to forgive me, son. You've got to. Oh, forget it. When the wedding take place? Last May. Comes April, and we'll have a fool from the lady. Look, Sparky, on your soul. Not a word of this to anybody. I know. A secret fool by Hamilcar Chief. I take it back, son. You came just in time. All I needed was the horse. We're going to have a horse now. Greatest ever. Maybe. <laughs> Listening to The Phantom Philly by George Agnew Chamberlain, an outstanding story selected for you by James Hilton. Before we return to tonight's story, I have a story of my own. It's about an architect and a man who wanted to build a house. But the architect made one strange provision. Don't show me your lot, he said, nor tell me how much you plan to spend. First, let me meet your family and get to know them. You see, I want to design you a home, not just a house, a home that expresses your own personalities your own tastes. Now, isn't that the kind of thinking you want when you choose a greeting card to send to a friend? You want a card that has a touch of extra warmth and friendliness. A card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. Hallmark cards are the result of that kind of thinking and planning. For no matter what the occasion, no matter what sentiment you might want to express, there's a Hallmark card that just suits your needs. No wonder people get such an extra amount of pleasure from Hallmark cards. And no wonder it pleases them even more when they look on the back of the car, as you did, and find the name Hallmark, the name that tells your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Now, James Hilton continues with the second act of the story he has chosen for tonight, The Phantom Philly by George Agnew Chamberlain. <laughs> On an early April night, an absurd creature made its appearance on Earth. It had a body about a foot long and legs about two yards long. It was golden brown and had black stockings and wouldn't have taken the practiced eye long to see that Hamilcar Chief was the little beast's father. As sweet a filly as I ever saw. You can name her, Sparky. She was born in April. Could we call her the April Star? For a long time thereafter, Sparky Thornton learned all that Thunder could teach him about harness racing. 
Day after day, Sparky rose in the misty dawn to do his chores and then to take the reins behind the lady, racing through the sunlit afternoons and then in the stillness of dusk, dreaming of trumpets and triumphs to come for the secret foe, the April Star. Since it was forbidden for anyone now to invade the roundhouse farm, Sparky one day walked over to the Boole farm to talk to Shaw Bruce. Sparky, why don't I see you anymore? Busy. It's been a long time. It's been very busy. What with? Business. Aren't you going to ask me to go swimming anymore in the pond on your uncle's farm? I'm going to teach you to drive a sulky soon. Big talk. I might even give your dad a lesson or two. Ha, ha. I'm uh, going to have to race him someday. Don't be afraid. I'm going to have to beat him. Okay. What'll that mean to us, Char? Nothing at all. You sure? Sure. Because you'll never beat my dad. Never. Don't forget what you said, Char. It'll mean nothing at all. Remember what you said, that's all. <laughs> Never mind harnessing the lady today, Sparky. We're taking out the April Star for the first time. You're getting it, boy. So is she. She understands your hands. You got them. The April Star savvies them. She's a winner, son. A winner. Great, son. Great. I don't like to work at Potter in winter, but I want both of you to be in shape for the Mettonville meet in April. Well, I'd be ready, Thunder. You'll be ready come St. Patrick's Day. You wait and see. Well, see, what I tell you? Comes next month in the Mettonville, and you're ready. What I tell you? I'm scared. A full month in advance, I'm scared. Oh, who in Thunderation is that in the road? Char Bruce. What did I tell you about keeping her off the farm? I'll turn around and go back. Sparky! Sparky! Never mind now. She's seen you. Oh, April. Let it go. It had to happen sooner or later. Sparky, Mr. Bowles, what a lovely filly. Yeah. And all this time you've been keeping her secret? Hmm. Oh, she's beautiful. She... Go on, Miss Bruce. You were saying... Hamilcar Chief. What do you mean, Char? That silly has Hamilcar Chief written all over. What was that silly? No, it's not. I know now what you've been up to. A secret foe. You've stolen her, I know. Oh, Char, what are you crying for? Hey, here, I'll get down. No, keep away from me. You're a thief and I despise you. I despise you. Char, Char, don't run off like that. I never want to see you. No, wait. Let her go, Sparky. Don't blame the girl. The April Star is a sword aimed right at her father's heart. Yeah. I know. Let's go back. You'll feel all right. Come April in the Mittenville. I hope. I'm glad you were here. After all, your dad wasn't driving today. Why, well, I, I came to watch you race. Congratulations. Thanks, Char. Oh, gee. The April Star is wonderful. Uh, what's Godal Bull saying? Oh, he's furious because it's Hamilcar Chief's secret fold. Everyone knows it now. And she's the lady's fold, too. Well, well, what next? You know. The Chester Clay Oaks race. 
My father drives in that one. I know. You'll never beat my father. Suppose I do beat him. What? I just want you not to feel bad when you don't beat him. All right. Promise? I won't feel bad. Then may I kiss today's winner? May you? It's part of the profit. It's done, you know. Well, it isn't... There. Uh, it, it isn't done enough is what I always say. See you at the Chester Clay Oaks meet? I hope. And in spite of everything, Sparky, the very best of luck. <laughs> Star, after running a bad first heat, then came roaring down the track in the second heat to put Jesus Christ definitely out of the running. And now, after a one half hour rest, the April Star and Tex by Abaday, the surviving Bull Entry, will fight it out for the right to go on to the great Hamiltonian League. The third and last heat will be called in one half hour. Star! Star Bruce! Star! A uh, Char. Hello, Sergeant. Oh, I've been looking for you. I, I thought I'd find you with Tug Bar Abney. Where's the handlers? Hey, why are you crying? What? I can't tell you. Well, not because I happen to win the second heat. No. Or because I might win the race in the next heat. Oh, no. They had a fight. Who? Father and Goda Bull. What about? Mr. Bull called Father terrible names because he lost the second heat. He said... What did he say? I want to know. He said, if you let that pimple of a boy beat you again, you're fired. What did he call me? Oh, he's such a mean little man. Well, oh, your dad can always get a big job at some other farm. Oh, no, he can't. Once you're washed out with Goda, boy, you're finished in harness. He ruined thunder. He'll ruin my dad. I see. If I win, your father is out of work for good. If I lose... Oh, no, Sparky. You've got your own race to run and, and to win. Father wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. Sure, I've got my race to win. Thunder wouldn't have it any other way. And Sparky. Yeah? From the bottom of my heart, good luck. Yeah. Star, I'm sorry. I've got to do this. Hands, son. Hands. You got them? Hands. Sorry, April Star. I'm sorry. You'll never beat my dad. Never. It's a dirty trick, April. i got to do it. Once you're washed out with Godot Bull, you're finished in harness race. Easy, April Star. Easy, girl. No hurry. Easy, soul girl. I'm a car chief. Forgive me, son. You've got to forgive me. No, Thunder. No. You've got to forgive me. Now. Hiya! Go, April! Go! Ladies and gentlemen, something is happening out there. April Star suddenly came out of it, and she's surging forward. They're neck and neck now, hop and hop, and she's reaching. The April Star is reaching, reaching, and the April Star wins. She's over and Wait a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, something's wrong again. She's diving straight for the pole. She's heading to go right through the rail. Sparky Barton is fighting to hold her back, but the star is going wild. She's... No, no. Good work, Barton. Good work. He stopped her. And now she's trotting back peaceably to the old harness. Hold on, and we'll try to find out exactly what happened. <laughs> I'm sorry, April Star. I had to do it. I had to do it, girl. Sparky. Oh, God forgive me. Sparky. God forgive me. Oh, no, Sparky. You had to win and you did. If 
that one you're crying? Mark, are you all right? What happened out there? Oh, Thunder. Thunder, she's blind. Blind? Hey, for star, too? She went blind somewhere near the half. I didn't want to drive her that way, but I had to, Thunder. I, I had to do it for you, I had to. One blind horse. <laughs> but I... I couldn't ever raise a blind horse again. I just couldn't. You'll never have to, son. She'll never be unhappy or suffer or go hungry. And there's a job for Jed Bruce and the kind of horse farm I'm going to have now. There'll be other April stars, Sparky. Broodmares and foals in every stall at Roundhouse Farm. Are there April stars? Other April stars. Other April. I like that. Other winners. I like that, too. But could a girl kiss today's winner? It's part of the profit. Yeah. But, but I'm going to reinvest that part of the profit at interest. Big interest. In a moment, James Hilton will return to tell us of the fine story he has selected for next week. Meantime, I'd like to remind you that there's nothing like one of those charming Hallmark dolls from the land of make-believe to make a child's eyes light up with joy. There are 16 dolls in all, Little Miss Muffet, Cinderella, Little Boy Blue, and 13 other childhood favorites. Each one wears a hat topped off by a jaunty plume that's a real feather. Each doll stands up by itself, and each one has a clever story verse inside. But that's not all. No, indeed. There's also a big, beautiful album to put them in. There are separate pockets in it for Mistress Mary, Peter Piper, Little Bo Peep, and all the rest. And on the cover is a picture of lovely little Luana Patton, star of Walt Disney's Melody Time. The Hallmark dolls are as easy to send as any Hallmark greeting card and cost only 25 cents each. And the big Hallmark doll collector's album, which you'd expect to cost at least a dollar, is also only 25 cents when you buy one or more of the Hallmark dolls. That means you can give some little friend of yours the album with three dolls in it to start a collection for only one dollar. See all 16 of the cute and colorful Hallmark dolls and the beautiful new Hallmark doll collector's album tomorrow at the store where you buy your Hallmark greeting cards. Now here again is James Hilton. Before I tell you about next week's story, I'd like you to know that our excellent cast included Barbara Isla as Shaw and Sam Edwards as Sparky. Ed Begley and Myra Marsh were Thunderbolt and his wife, and Tom Hamlin was the race announcer. And now next week on our Hallmark Playhouse, we have a story that's different. Different at any rate from our previous stories in this series. It satisfies two hankerings that I've had since our program began. One was to do a story of this kind, and the other was to include in our series something by the great American novelist Edith Wharton. We've chosen a story of her called Afterward. I don't want to spoil it for you by saying too much, but I will throw out this teaser. If the story had a second title or a subtitle, you might call it The Ghost Goes East. Well, at any rate, if you don't get my meaning, or for that matter, even if you do, be sure to listen next Thursday. Then the following Thursday, we shall present The Old Nest, a story by Rupert Hughes. So until next week, this is James Hilton saying good night. Our music was composed and conducted by Lynn Murray. To be doubly sure of the finest quality, always look on the back of your cards for those three identifying words, a Hallmark card. Hallmark cards are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. Now, this is Frank Goss saying good night to you all until next week at the same time when James Hilton returns to present Edith Wharton's Afterward. This program came to you from the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.